and welcome to the official non-spoiler discussion for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, arguably the most anticipated video game movie of the year. Sorry Mario. Today we've got the lovely Kate, the lovely James. Hello. I'm just going to try to summarise some thoughts, of course, without spoilers, on the FNAF movie, um, which is going to be hard because there's a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so basically just sort of, I think, uh, in terms of what to talk about, maybe yeah, sort of the score, uh, the cinematography, storyline, in terms of what hasn't been shown in trailers. Um, is there any sort of thing? Your outfit? My outfit? Yeah, I, 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 want, I was going to let that go. Uh, <laughs> this is your normal attire. Yeah, it's my normal attire. Yeah, I've been, actually been wearing this for the eight months that I've been writing uh, behind the scenes on the Slurp YouTube channel. You should check that out. And the, uh, so... Um, what did you think of the movie anyway? It's sort of a non-spoiler um, thought, if you want to start anywhere. Um, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, I think the main thing um, that I initially took away when I first came out was it was nothing, as I think we can both agree I expected. Mm -hmm. um, and what we predicted on the channel, mm -hmm. it, it's nothing as we thought. Um, and I think partly because of that, it's... We've been reacting to every, we're looking at every trailer, every piece of news, mm -hmm. anything they've said about the movie, the fan theories. And we've also, we've kind of put ourselves in a situation where we had sold ourselves on what the movie is. Yeah. And told myself in. what the movie is. Yeah. I went in thinking, all right, this is, you know, it's going to be this, this, and this. How it's going to work, yeah. I'm, I, f I think we pretty much thought we knew what we were yeah. walking into. So when we came out, we were a bit like, Shell shop, like, yeah. What just happened? Yeah, and like it was... I mean, there was a lot that we expected, but then there was some scenes that completely threw us off guard, and and I moments on the trailers that were, weren't actually used in the film. Yeah, and the tone um, was very different to what we thought. I think it it was trying to hit that um, balance of horror and jump scares, um, like from the games, you know, that sort mm -hmm. of tone. But then it also felt a little bit mismatched at certain points. Um, yeah, I can see that. And the tone, it kind of felt a little bit unbalanced at times. And how about for you, James is someone who you haven't been as in the weeds, uh, in in the weeds of FNAF as we have. Um, but So that's why I thought it was an interesting point to sort of hear from you. And I think a lot of people in the FNAF community want to know what sort of an outsider's perspective Uh as you, as you said at the beginning, as uh, this is uh, one of the more highly anticipated video game movies, and it's only once you said that I kind of realised that this is you know based off of a, a lot of fanfare, and as video game movies go, this is actually a pretty good one. Like there is a lot of first of all, it is very well made, but the way that they've changed the narrative of like a pretty basic game, mm -hmm. and they've obviously it's like I've asked you a lot about that. But they've delved quite deep into the lore to actually make a story that, well, sometimes it's pretty silly, like ghost children and uh, animatronics. Uh, a lot of it did actually like make sense uh, in a way that it was actually meaningful to uh, the actual narrative and to the story, uh, to the story, and to Ned uh, for Subaru. I think they kind of had to do that as well because there's a lot of people, obviously it's taken, what, eight years? <clears throat> the game came, first came out in 2014. So it's taken eight eight years. Um, so there's a lot of people asking, you know, was it worth the wait? And I think for FNAF fans, absolutely. I think every FNAF fan that's been waiting for this film is going to be like, that was amazing, 10 out of 10, smash out of the park. But I think for nons, I think... They may have a different I opinion. I don't know if I can agree with that. I, fan I'm service. actually really curious to see if all FNAF fans does. I don't know if he does justice. And I like what they did, but I don't know if it actually does justice to the game. Mm, no. In a weird I, I think if you're an outsider going into this, and, and, and maybe. And you're trying to say you brought a friend along who knew nothing about FNAF, and you're. I don't know if someone would get it mm. because it doesn't really tie into. And I think we can 
go into the spoiler discussion what this franchise and maybe it does because it it got crammed so much of the lore into there and some of the focal characters and and where it could go next is interesting but the basic premise of that first game was sort of just the jump scares and being in this and being stuck in um a stationary position and having all these different things to do basically like a stress a stress management um and I never so quite felt the movie invoke that, you know, mm-hmm. that sense of stress and like yeah. the, the, in, a, in an impossible situation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it, quite, it felt quite rushed in that sense as well. Because I don't think it gave, the film didn't give enough time to build up that stress. It was kind of without giving, you're in, you're out. It's an extra, you're here, you're there. This is going on. We're jumping into this character. We're not yeah. sticking with this. So that was the one I, don't, I, can't, I said to one of you when it got out, I was like, I wasn't actually sure if we actually filmed what we got. Um, there were a lot more, I hope this isn't too much of a spoiler, but there are a lot more thoughts. But... Uh, yeah. Touched on, but yeah. um, this sort of what did you think about sort of in general terms, not in maybe where their characters go, but the actors and sort of the material they were given and how they sense where I thought uh, Mike's character he was like very serious all the time, and then other characters without giving too much a word were kind of on more of a jerky aspect, and it kind of added humour in where it kind of felt like it wasn't needed. Um, yeah. I actually think I really like... My favourite, I think, other than Matthew Lillard, who played... Steve Raglan. Yeah, the non spoiler version. Um, just don't say anything here. <laughs> um, I really liked. Uh, I, I think he was amazing. I really liked Piper Rubio. Is probably my favorite performance because I think she actually. She was great. When Mike worked the best was when he was with her, and I sort of bought their relationship. Yeah. And um, I kind of like the idea that I feel like if, they, if this film does well, they'd have like a hundred of these, and she'll probably grow up and be forty, still starring in these yeah. movies, and. She can be the last chick left standing. Yeah, like sort of horror thing. Halloween. Uh, yeah, and I and I, Jimmy I, 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 I really Jim. like her, and yeah. I like sort and I like their connection and what was going on. So I thought they worked really well together. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it was necessarily a bad performance. There was a lot of very campy yeah, performances in the very like a little bit like this script felt like it wasn't. They. Oh, I didn't know if you felt that. this at times. There's certain scenes. And certain cameos that happen in certain scenes mm-hmm. um, where the characters feel very cartoony. Yeah. And I fall down my head and I was like, I don't hate it. Uh, it's like you're trying to play it. it the scene that you're on about, it got yeah. a lot of laughs in the cinema, yeah. which is, you know, that was good. But it kind of felt like they're playing on a joke. They're playing on this cameo. But, you know, we're still you're still trying to immerse the audience into a film and not take us out and think, I mean, that's... Where we're not seeing that person as a character, we're seeing that person as who they are yeah. in their life. You know that kind of oh, tunnel. Why don't you talk about? Yeah, 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 a little yeah. bit. I know that. And and the surrounding aspects of that scene, there's other characters in there doing certain things mm-hmm. and acting in certain way. That whole scene was pretty comical. Yeah, yeah. And I, 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 and I thought there was a few times where everyone sort of has cartoonish objectives and cartoonish. Um, sort of uh yeah it's like the way they were written um but i, I didn't and how they performed the characters but i was like i wasn't mad because everybody looked like they were having fun yeah in a way like it wasn't it wasn't my you know what i mean i was still having fun with it i liked that the animatronics well yeah we haven't even talked about them yet have we yeah i mean that was like out of the yeah like blown. i mean jim henson like oh yeah that was, that was really really cool and uh, i think any time they were on screen it was like the best yeah and honestly and parts of the film i was like can we have some more of them yeah it felt like quite a while for them to come onto screen as well like, yeah and um, properly but when i don't get mad at that because there's i kind of got the template of the kind of film they were going to make and it was a lot of these films in the 80s and 90s where you would sort of 
go through your story and build up your characters and then you'd have your big crescendo of the characters. Mm -hmm. But it was like when we did get them earlier on, I was like, um, yeah, they use them quite sparingly. Yeah. yeah. In the film. Uh, how do we say this fact? Well, we can say I think it, it, the, it's not really a big idea. No, I think big... how, because a lot of fans and people from the trailers, they were really angry um, and didn't like the idea. But I think how they've done it in the film, it works and it makes sense. Yeah, they're not normally never read it. So this is like the whole controversy, right? It was, like, it was like huge that in the trailers, they first revealed them. They had these red eyes. Yeah. Um, and there's actually two versions of these eyes that you'll see. Uh, a sort of orangey tone ones yeah. um, and like the full red ones. I think the full red ones are only used. Um, there's no. no, I mean. Yeah, don't go into this film thinking, you know, you're going to get gory, blood, gore, horror. It's not like that at all. Well, that being said, now, now that I think about it, there was one scene that was kind of like out of place. It was like a classical horror film scene. I think I know the bit you're talking about. And there's we can talk about it in a spoiler discussion because there's a reason why that's in there. Is there? Really? Yeah. I think I know the scene you're talking about. Yeah, so there's some aspects of like of classic horror horror films, mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, and it was nicely shot as well. If we're talking about the same, sh I liked the way they shot that to yeah. to get uh, the the angle, yeah. yeah in with they had to do it to get the rating they needed to to be a PG thirteen. Yeah. Um, yeah, so definitely. I think the whole film look really nice, actually. The way yeah. it was shot. You're the film guy. What was your? I thought it was it was really well shot. Yeah, I mean it's. it's High budget movie, so you mm. really. Um, but in terms of like the way, uh, one thing I, I like that they didn't do is that maybe kind of like what we've done in here. A lot of films these days use a lot of like really um, like fluorescent, colorful lights, um, especially in like uh, horror films. Um, and I think that sometimes it looks a bit cheap, but in this one, they didn't really do that as much. They've made it more kind of classic 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it did scream. Law, they did scream like eighties. I was like, if this film was released in nine in the nineteen eighties, and then you watched it again today, you would think, oh, this is, they don't make films like this anymore. It had like a lot of that sort of nostalgia. The, yeah, it had a feel um, of that sort of Amberlin. I'll I have to mention Gremlins any time I talk about FNAF, but Gremlins or uh, the Goonies or Jurassic, like that sort of practical. It had that. It, it, I could see. Connor, I think that the film overall was actually good. I don't know if it was the best horror film uh, or even the best film I've seen this year. Um, but in terms of actual uh, enjoyment that I got out of it, I actually enjoyed it quite a lot. And so mm -hmm. I think that's something to be said. Well, that's good because I think for one of the original videos we had planned to do when we came out of this film was FNAF hater versus FNAF lover. Because I thought you were going to, we was like, we, we talked the whole time. We were like, uh, you're going to hate the film. I, was, I said to you, I, was, I, I don't think you're going to like this. Yeah. I think I showed you a trailer before and you were like, this looks kind of, and I was explaining some of the lore to you. Yeah. And you're like, huh? Um, and that's the impression. That I wonder if I look dumb parts. There is, yeah. But I hope it's, people, enough people are having fun with it. Um because I don't think you have to, it's it's not craving to take itself parts of the film that weren't so dumb that it kind of takes you out of it. Yeah, I I um, like he yeah. said if it were better written, mm -hmm. I think that would have just improved it just a lot. Yeah, and so that's not necessarily. I mean, it is uh, negative for the film. But it's like one aspect that someone just didn't do very well, mm -hmm. and that shouldn't take away from the whole thing. Yeah, even though it's a crucial part. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, for me, I thought the performances were, I think it was, the performances were great. Uh, the music, uh, there's a, a great song that they use towards the end that everyone's going to love. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many like fan moments. Easter egg. Easter eggs. And, and I mean, the, like and nods was, to the game. And they, they kept saying, didn't they? They was like, you need to rewatch it. I need to rewatch it back. Cause yeah. there's like certain moments I was like, did I? Um, so we're gonna to have to do another one later down the line, but I think a lot of this needs to be summarized in a spoiler yeah. uh, review. How like I like what you're saying about how in depth and, and like there's a lot of little Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. There's it now that I think about it, like everything outside of uh, of the um, pizzeria was like really boring to be honest. 
I and see what you mean. Yeah, I, I, I go for it. Yeah, you want, you want, you, it's something you like that. Back, they take you away from the animatronics and the pizzeria, and you're like, no, it was like, they kept going away a few, a few too many times, and I was like, "Come back!" And like, I'd got the idea now. Yeah. Um, and you can just return back to the pizzeria and have fun there, and do some frights or jump scares or whatever, and just let the. Are we going to spoiler. Yeah. So those were our non-spoiler faults on the Five Nights content. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out more Five Nights at Freddy's content on the channel. It is going to be coming out fast and hard. <laughs> that's off a god i don't know what i'm saying uh it's gonna be coming out all week we're gonna have so much to talk about uh we're gonna have to watch this movie a couple more times uh in theaters on peacock we watch a lot. Oh, it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah. but uh thank you for joining us we want to hear your thoughts down below try to keep this comment section spoiler free and then join us over after the spoiler discussion where you can talk spoilers Bye. 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 Bye.